This is a JLG 450AJ. You can tell it's a JLG 450AJ because it says so right there. It belongs to Dirt Perfect, not your average millennial, and I think Jason works a lot still. They kind of all went in on it, and it's a pretty handy unit. On the previous, well, whole video series, we've been using this to tear down and salvage an old limestone church. And the agreement I made with them was, if y'all let me use it, I'll replace some of the leaky seals on this thing. This was a Rand Winbot purchase for him, and they've done quite a bit of work to it since they've got it. And they're kind of getting down to the nitpicky things, like keeping hydraulic fluid in the machine. You know, the basics. There are four sets of seals we're replacing on here. This is the telescoping cylinder. It goes in the telescoping boom right here. Dirt Perfect already pulled that out because he wanted to make sure he got the right number off for the seal number. The other seal is gonna be on this cylinder here. And the other two seals are on this cylinder and this cylinder here. The lighting in the shed in the morning is just, it's something else, man. The order of operations here, that is bright. Get those cylinders off, and then we're gonna take them up to Dirt Perfect Shop, and we'll change the seals out up there. Now, a fellow would think that these are pretty difficult to get out, the cylinders, because they're all in the boom, but they've actually got her set up pretty decent. Looks like we got a pin here pin here should be able to slide it out that way and the hoses are just right here yeah Same thing on this side, little keeper. Now, is that just gonna come crashing out of there? This is your reminder. I'm not a mechanic, okay? Dirt Perfect just can't afford one. So here we are. Okay. Does this slide pretty easy? So this pin here is stuck in there pretty good. And by pretty good, I mean I'm not gonna put a crazy amount of effort into it or mushroom it out or breaking out a torch or getting a whole bunch of other tools to try to get that pin out when all I could do is take the skid steer, which is perfectly positioned behind you, lift that basket up, that pins out, and as long as we go slow and pay attention, that cylinder should pull right out of there. And then we can take those cap screws off and we can all right there, you know what I mean? We don't have to mess with the pin. We can leave that for the next guy. sure that is in fact all it's attached so these lifts have what are called line locks on the cylinders basically if a hose blows example that'll lock the cylinder out so it can't fall kind of keeps you from meeting the ground quicker than you want to and I bet it has something to do with that but that's what's preventing me from getting that to collapse into there which is gonna prevent me from getting this thing to slide out oh Come loose, or is it something came loose? There we go. I was worried there's gonna be a whole bunch of different components on that check valve that was gonna drop and lose in the, the gravel, but that's what we got. As soon as we took it off, it's kind of trying to bleed itself out right now. So, in theory, I think we can take the pry bar and try to collapse that cylinder now. Very nice. Very nice, the hoses are sliding, everything's moving. Making me happy. There we go. Doing a great job catching everything. Very nice. Here, I'll go back to the skid steer and hope she comes down. Hope she doesn't flop too hard on us. How close are we? You gotta tell me that's not gonna clear. That's what we call a waste of time.
So we're gonna go ahead and move back here. And just ignore that front for a little bit. A little confidence booster, that's what I like to call it. Now we're changing the seals on both of these. Couldn't find my inch and an eighth. Five bucks says I need inch and an at least. <laughs> oh, cool. Well, what's this? Hold on. We got her here. Well, it's well, too big. Too big? Nathan, I don't have it. Dad got it. I mean, let's see if Dirt Perfect's got one over in the service truck. That's so you got the pin splitter there. Pin splitter still leaves an automatic version? Listen, it's a terrible thing to say, but other people's failures can really bring you up some days. Makes you feel good, doesn't it? It does make you feel a little good, yeah. That's why I just yeah. don't want to show you guys up so I ain't swinging. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he's going to put the pipe on there with a the cheater pipe, and they're going to try to get her to twist and get her, you know, loosey-goosey. She'll slide right out of there, confident of that. Oh, yeah. Well, Dirt Perfect didn't have an inch and eighth wrench on his truck either we're kind of shade treating it down here all right we're just shade treating it. so we're going to do the right thing and use an adjustable mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. still got the nut on there i'm just kind of tapping her back it's not taking a lot which is encouraging. So here's my wildest hopes and dreams that I can undo those cap nuts and it's not gonna happen like that though. Never does. Yeah, let's just undo that bottom one. Well, that one we'll just pull up with our fingers. to Mike's shop real quick to grab a plug kit. When we undo these lines, there's gonna be quite a bit of fluid in them, so I figure I'll throw a plug on real quick. Oh, that is the, come on, get off of it, thank you. Wrong size, no kidding. There we go. Oh, good, good. Glad we minimized that leak. Glad we did that. <coughs> This one shouldn't leak much because my assumption is that's the return line. But we'll go ahead and throw a plug on in case there's any residual in the line. Very nice. All right, so we moved up to the What is this? He has security tag in his vice. That's not suspicious. We're uh, moving the cylinders up here to the shop so I can do the seals in a little bit cleaner environment and with all the tools that I need. But let me show you something. So Not Your Average Millennial has been the one ordering the parts for this. So we got the first seal kit. I don't know which cylinder this is for. He ordered two seal kits, all right? He ordered one for one of these stabilizer jacks or whatever you want to call them. And then he ordered one for I had to think, then he ordered one for the jib. And then Mike pulled that telescoping cylinder out the other day because he wanted to make sure he's getting the right seal kit for it because I guess there's some variance between some of the models. So then he put a second order in for another one of these kits because he figured if we're doing one, let's do both of them. And then he got the seal kit for the telescoping model. So I should have two seal kits now and two seal kits coming in today. So I got one seal kit here, 2901548. Look at this seal kit they sent, look at that. Even says seal kit 2901810. It, there's nothing. What is what am I supposed to do with this? That step two is going to be uh, break this loose. Yeah, that's see, that, that seal's pretty busted down there, too. This is always a fun thing when you go to work in Mike's shop and there's boxes with your name on it. That's always neat. So if you sent this 
Lord knows how long ago. It's a tumbler. I'm not going to touch it with my greasy hands with uh, some fire apparatus on it. And that's pretty cool. Oh, heck, dude. It's got the Captain Kleeman logo on there. Now that's cool. And anyway, if you sent this, thanks. I appreciate it. I don't, uh, I don't have the information from it, though. Put your name in the comments. I want to know who we are. All right, I just talked to Matt. Good news is this number is the one for the jib that we can't get out anyway. So he said he's not too worried about changing it out because it's really not leaking as bad as the other ones are. Now, this is the axle lock cylinder. It does exactly what it says it does. This is gonna be a time consuming process if this is how we're doing all of them. I'll tell you that. I did some digging. I found this. Yeah, it's a little nicer. O-rings look good on that one. Why is this? Oh, this is on wheels now? Now, cut. Why? why? Why is it on wheels? I didn't, this wasn't what I expected today. Let's see if I chalk it with that random chunk of metal. Oh! Thanks for the tumbler again, seriously. Love it. Shoot. You know, just need a run and start here. Oh, yeah. There we go. The old pop of satisfaction. Oops, my bucket missed. Oh no, no, oh, my bucket's missed. Hold on. I normally gotta take. Part of the seal. Normally you gotta take it all the way out and take the nut off the other end. But will that? Does that clear that? Can you just slide that? Why does it stop so there? Stop suddenly right there. Why? I did get the tech manual for this, or downloaded it. It didn't have a whole lot of information on these cylinders. So the dust seal is out. It just completely, it was having some issues. But anyway, it's out. We've got a replacement for it somewhere. Oh no. Oh, here it is, right here. But we'll set it to the side. I'm not gonna put anything in yet until we get the rest of them out. There we go. All right. Let's see, that is gonna be this one. And it was this direction. All right, so I got her cleaned up a little bit. I like to clean it up to where it's almost clean enough, and then I just lower my standards. Typically how I'm gonna do that, I got a little cup of oil here. I don't like to put this stuff back together dry if I can avoid it. I got a clean-ish rag. Well, if you're not gonna replace the piston seals, you don't. We don't have the piston seals, we yeah. just have these seals. And right? then you'll need to take that out. The only extra one in there is this one. Well, that's going to be a, just a guide. on your other one that's still in there because it's got the big wide end on it. So that would have to go off the other end on the one that we can't get the pin out of. Uh, good news. That's this one. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> We're Had set it there. Out, they knew we wouldn't get it they out. Do, yeah. <laughs> they they don't uh, need it right now. Those guys don't need that yet. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Because no. it, it doesn't want to come past here. I gave her some good heave ho run starts and a few tappy taps. Yeah, well, you don't have to take it out. The piston seals are fine. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, run with her, bud. All right, that's what we're doing then. Well, the microphone died, so I'll just yell a little bit. Uh, this is the next one. Let's 
So you went that way like that. They make this little tool imitate with it's like this and this and there's a lever and you push it. Kind of kinks it and bends it. So you can drop it in and insert it. He does not have one of those. So we got to try to get it worked in there without it, which I've always been able to do before, but normally on bigger cylinders, so you got I've always had a little bit more. I'm going to use a fancy word here, pliability. Hey, that's something. All right. That's something everybody can enjoy. Okay. Looks good. No rips, no tears. Open side towards pressure. I need to find a socket that is the same size here. Uh, anyway, dust seal is on. Looks good. The inner seal, cup seal, you want to call it that? We can. Looks good. Everything else looks good. We got this O-ring on the outside. Listen, I'm just going to need you to pause the conversation. This piece is kind of directional too. It's got a groove that faces the side towards the O-ring. Remember, this isn't a how-to, all right? I'm just sharing sharing the experience with you. That's all I'm doing. I'm not, I'm not showing I wouldn't use anything I say as advice on how to do something other than, you know, just, just do it. That's my advice, as long as you can do it in a safe manner. Uh, that looks good on everything. I'm going to coat this with some heavy oil on the inside. Actually, let's just do the cylinder. Let me put some oil on this cylinder. Let's see if we can get this slid on. And I'm just watching the O-ring right here. I'm missing the bucket again. Watching this O-ring, making sure it doesn't ball up and it slides in okay. And it looked really good. It didn't look like any problem at all. All right. All right, the second one always goes faster. This is the exact same. Dirt Perfect brought the seal kit for this one, so we got everything we need. There she went. Wow, that was fast. I think he just gave her the old boom on her. This one. Oh gosh. Oh dear. A little after the fact. Yeah, that's all it was, just a little. Okay. Here's a question. Why is this JLG part number 7818? And this JLG part number, 4150. Good news is it passed. We got that going for us. Yeah, you will. Yes, you will. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, there she is. Okay.
And I think, well, maybe if we undo this set screw, then that collar will slide off there. You can see where that seal's blown out all the way around there. Not much left of it. Well, that's just the dust seal, but the main seal down, down inside is all blown out too. As you can see. Probably a big cause of the leak. Always have people, and I, I think they're generally trying to be nice, but they always have tips and tricks, and you should do it this way, and you should do it that way. And I uh, Listen, I think that's great, but as a hydraulic repair person, I'm not trying to grow this skill set. I just do this when I have to, honestly. I'm really not too concerned about being better at it. I'm decently okay at fumbling my way through it and getting everything to work. Are there ways to do it better? Oh yeah, you betcha. I probably ought to ask one of them there professionals, but it's certainly not me, I can tell you that. I'm just a guy who's trying to survive and get things done. Right, that's all I'm trying to do. So that's what we're working on today. Let's get these replaced in here. This is kind of in my way. We'll move it for a minute. Pretty nervous about this one. This is pretty tiny. It's gonna be hard to get it to um, do this number. And this is, it's a two piece seal, but it's gotta go in at the same time. A lot of room for error here. So luckily they got well, the worst pick ever putting it in, honestly. Really. You guys are at, oh, 2%. Yeah, I don't know if you're gonna make it. Could I have got up and changed the battery? Absolutely, but I was super hyper-focused and that seals in and looks good. Hello, hello. Hey, we're back. Welcome to, uh, I got nothing. It's going well though. Whoa, I don't remember seeing all this. Well, a cat got in here. <laughs> and uh, I had to do something about it real quick. Well, all right, let's do this real quick. Nothing internal on that. Just these little guides or wear rings, whatever a fellow wants to call them. Came with new ones. piece of rubber on the bottom side. Mm -hmm. Which is that? There we go. I ended up running under some hot water and kind of going around and stretching it out as I went. That got her a little bit more pliable. That should be that. One last O-ring. I think it's on the cylinder itself though. Let's get everything set up and see if we can't start getting this thing put back together. advanced technique. Not really closing hard because it's just a hollow tube. I don't want to crush it. It's just enough to keep it from, you know.
Okay, we'll go for round 27 here. This is fun. I don't know what you're doing on a Friday, but if it's not this, you're probably doing it right. So far, let's just give her some more. Oh, I tell you what, though. I guess it just needs to go, I'm assuming it will stop where it needs to stop. And then there's plenty of room in that groove for the ring. No kidding, right on in there. Looks good. Cool. I'll get this lower in the truck. Let me get this mess picked up. It's like 4.30 now. And I could keep working on it, but I got other stuff I got to do this evening. So I'll just meet you in the morning. The following morning, we're down at Mike's lot. Come here. Somebody say there, Dan, I need to clean out my pickup truck bed. But what if somebody needs, what if somebody needs 10 pounds of river gravel and I don't have it? I got it now, you know, I can help them out. Oh, sorry about the cylinder there. Or like a, a random four foot section, three foot section of fence there. You know, I, I just want to be able to help people, okay? And you can't help people if you don't have a bed full of random stuff. That's science. 60 minutes did a special on it. I did find some torque specs. I never could find on the JLG manual the exact torque specs for these cylinders, but I did find the torque specs for this size screw, specifically for hydraulic cap screws. So we can run that and that should be fine. I'm not gonna tell you what it is, because it's not a how-to. And if you're doing this yourself, I want you to look it up, okay? I'm not gonna be liable. It's not my fault you trusted a stranger on the internet. All right, that should be that. Let's go get these on. I don't know if you peeped the rubber band here earlier, but the rubber band is how I marked which one goes on the right side. Something like that. In my head, it's easier to get this pin in first. In practice, well, we're gonna find out. How do I? There we go. Good, clean, sterile environment, no dust. Well, that's good. And I got these just finger tight. We're gonna lose a little bit of fluid out of everything when I do this, but should be able to. Maybe I gotta take both of them out. I don't know which one's which on here. <sighs> Such a clean, sterile environment. There we go.
So we got the backside all buttoned up here. Our little check valves or lock valves, whatever you want to call them, they're snugged up, they're good. Got these bolts tightened up to approximately what they should be based on a guess. Let's move to the front. So the unanimous group decision between everybody that's been tinkering around on this thing, we're not doing the seals on this cylinder. See, it's not leaking bad enough to warrant it right now. We don't really feel like going up to the shop and getting the torch and doing all that fancy work and getting a new pin. Just doesn't seem worth it to be frank with you fellas. So we're just gonna leave it. I just gotta get that hooked back up. We get that hooked back up, then we gotta try to get that long telescoping cylinder fished back down to here. We'll see how that goes. See how this goes. See how any of it goes. All right. We got that loosened up enough that it'll stay when we slide it, which is good. So that one's all buttoned up. So the last thing we're down to is that long telescoping cylinder, which goes in from the back side. I'll show you here. This slides in that tunnel there. So I'm not long enough fully extended, it's right about in here, even pushed all the way to the plate. So I'm going to make a little a couple grease marks here. And uh, we're going to use this skid steering slider in just a little bit. <laughs> oh yeah! Look at her. She's right there. Yeah, this one's just got snap rings on the end. Oh, never getting that back. Get, get that where it needs to go. Yeah. Yeah. Get on that bolt hole, thank you. Fire this thing up.
come puking out anywhere. I don't hit the front of the building. This is what you expect to see, just a big deluge of hydraulic oil come out. Major blowouts, I don't even see any seeps anywhere. Everything looks to be pretty good on it. We bled that out the best way we could figure out. We just ran it through the ditch and worked those cylinders and left the bleed screws loose as we did so and then tightened them down. Is that the right way to do it? I don't know, but somebody's gonna tell me. But it's fine o'clock somewhere. I'm positive of that. It should be fine. Probably won't rent it from them until somebody else uses it first, but I think it's going to be a good deal. Next video, we're taking the TL240. I'm getting ready to load it up right now on the trailer behind the truck. We're taking it up to the house to split some firewood with the Halverson 120 wood processor. The lumber for the YouTube yacht framing comes in the first of next week. So basically, I got like a day and a half of no material and nothing scheduled. I figured let's go ahead and get some firewood split because that's kind of the whole purpose of having a firewood processor. You can do it right quick when you got a hot minute. And after that, we'll be on the YouTube. Yeah, so I'm pretty dang excited about it. We still got to squeeze in somewhere going to get the material up and back, but that's all dependent on whenever his semi is available. There's really no big rush on that. Lots of good stuff coming. I can't thank you guys enough for being here. I try every time, but I got nothing just other than thanks for watching. And I hope I get to see you on the next one. Yeah. Well, that's not too bad. I think they'll be okay with it.